First at six, new questions surrounding the death of former Olympic gymnastics coach John Gettert. Good evening and thank you so much for joining us for Action News at six. I'm Carolyn Clifford. And I'm Dave Llewellyn. Law enforcement is split over whether Gettert should have been taken into custody before being charged with felony crimes. Here's a look at the timeline leading up to the tragedy. At one o'clock on Thursday, the state attorney general announced 24 criminal charges against John Gettert. The 63-year-old was scheduled to be arraigned at 2.15 that afternoon in Eaton County District Court. Michigan State Troopers found Getter's body at 3.24, where he died by suicide at a rest area on I-96 in Clinton County. 7 Action News reporter Simon Shaket breaks down the reasons law enforcement experts strongly disagree about the way this case was handled. John Gettert faced 24 felony charge use of young gymnasts prior to taking his own life. Now some are questioning if the case was mishandled. What a great best friend John was to Larry for giving him an entire, entire world where he was able to abuse so easily. You, John Gettert, also deserve to sit behind bars right next to Larry. There isn't one bone in my body that doesn't hate John Gettert for everything he has done to me in my career. As they spoke about 2012 U.S. Olympic women's gymnastics coach John Gettert, they were powerful words of survivors no one could forget. Now it's the Michigan Attorney General facing tough questions about allowing Gettert to turn himself in for those charges, something that never happened when the 63-year-old instead took his own life. Generally, the press conference was always done after the arrest was made. This was clearly a case where they spiked the ball before they crossed the goal line. Retired Detroit FBI Supervisor Andy Bartnowak responding after the AG's office called it a miscommunication and believing Gettert was on his way to a sheriff's substation. Dana Nessel's office further adding they followed procedure and had no indication he would flee, hurt others or himself. For somebody that's facing a, a substantial amount of time in prison, you shouldn't be allowing them to turn themselves in. If you're going to ask for a high bond, if you're going to ask for no bond, then you have every reason to go out and affect the arrest. No, uh, it's not a mistake necessarily. Abed Hamoud is a retired federal prosecutor who's helped make the call hundreds of times on when a situation actually warranted an arrest. There's always risk in every arrest. There are risks for law enforcement. Add on top of it COVID. He says second guessing the attorney general's decision is simply unfair. The only time you can prevent this if you had signs that the man is suicidal. But if you had these signs, then the turning himself in would have been handled differently. To speculate that he would have been alive if he was taken into custody is not correct. People do commit suicide in custody as well. The Michigan Attorney General's office has declined an interview request citing an ongoing state police investigation. We will stay on top of this to get the answers in this case as soon as that investigation is concluded. Simon Shaykat, 7 Action News.